Hey, what's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Narx Nemesis. For those of y'all watching me on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That helps YouTube's algorithm pick up this content and send it out to more people. Somebody liked it for you, so make sure you like it for somebody. If you need a one-on-one -on -one phone session over the weekend or any other time, the link is in the description. If you need a phone session for any time over the weekend, though, you have to send me an email to schedule. Um, and if you need one during the week or whatever, the, uh, the scheduling options should be available in the link. Um, if you want to donate to the channel, the link is also in the description. Y'all make sure y'all go check out my new singles, Superstition and Masquerade. They are both about my narcissistic experiences and overcoming them. Masquerade is more about my ex narc popping back up after some time and acting like nothing happened and that she's a completely different person. Superstition features a voicemail of my ex narc trying to hoover me and I ain't going for it. Uh, <clears throat> today, I want to talk about you not needing them. Through the whole course of this relationship, this situationship, this marriage, this uh, business <clears throat> relationship, whatever it is, they've conditioned you to thinking that you cannot function without them. They have gaslit you. They have lied to you. They've cheated on you. They've abandoned you and came back. They've ghosted you. They've um, tore down your self-esteem. They tore down your character. They assassinated your character. They did all these systematically damaging things to you um, in order to decode you and deconstruct you um, <clears throat> because what I've noticed about dealing with people in general is people on the outside of you notice, <clears throat> excuse me, shit, <clears throat> people on the outside of you notice your traits and your qualities and your achievements more than you do because you're functioning on autopilot. <clears throat> What's going on? You're functioning on autopilot and you're just doing these things because that's naturally you. You're being creative because you're naturally creative. You're being a writer because you're naturally a writer. You're being a songwriter because you're naturally a songwriter. You're being a poet because you're naturally a poet. You're being nice because you're naturally nice. Charming because you're naturally charming. Genuine because you're naturally genuine. And there is no motive behind it. So you don't think these things are anything special because you're doing it naturally. You're doing it genuinely. Other people notice these things because a lot of these things that you do naturally seem supernatural to them. I'm going to say that again. A lot of things that you do naturally seem supernatural to other people. <clears throat> and it can be as simply as it can be as simple as your focus, how driven you are, how ambitious you are, how um, attentive to detail you are, how resilient you are. A lot of people will admire you um, <clears throat> because simply the things in the adversity that you're facing does not stop you from doing amazing things. Um, like a lot of y'all, y'all know my condition going on with my neck, whatever the case is. If I didn't tell y'all, you know, what happened or whatever the case is, you'll swear nothing's going on. You'll swear <clears throat> I'm not dealing with anything because I don't let it slow me down. I don't let it deter me. Do I have moments where, you know, I get discouraged? Yes, but they are not stronger than my will. And they, most in, most importantly, they're not stronger than the force of God. Whatever you believe in, um, you'll never know. I got other stuff going on that you'll never know that I deal with. But because I handle it 
with such <clears throat> prestige, as you will, um, and so much confidence and ambitiously, a lot of people can't do that. And it's some things that y'all can do that I'm probably not good at. That's what makes us unique individuals. There might be something that you can do that I admire you for. The difference is <clears throat> when you're good in nature, when you're genuine, when you're, um, you know, you have good intentions, you admire those traits in people. And when you're in admired, when you admire traits in people, you become inspired if your intentions are pure. Now, if your intentions aren't pure, you'll see these things in other people and you will admire them, but you will grow disdain for that person. You will grow envy towards that person. You will grow hate towards that person. And you might start acting a little funny. You might start doing a little stupid shit <clears throat> to bring that person down to make you feel better about yourself. That's what differentiates people, intention. That, that's, all, that's really the big picture of what differentiates people from one another. Intention, what are your intentions? And we all know the narcissist does not have good intentions. Their intentions is to kill, steal, and destroy anything and everything in his path. <clears throat> and that means... Sorry, I went to the studio last night, so that's probably what's going on with my voice. Um, that means that when they see your qualities, when they see your traits, when they see these great things about you, they're in, they admire you, but it triggers the disdain. It triggers the envy. It, it triggers the jealousy. And at that point, they'll try to emulate it. And if they can't emulate it, they have to destroy it. Because if they can't emulate it, that means it doesn't benefit them. And they take it as a threat. See, if you're a confident person, people who thrive off of not confident people will see you as a threat. If you're confident in your abilities and somebody is not, they're, they're going to feel insecure standing next to you. They're going to feel insecure around you. So their goal is to bring you down to their level with whatever tactic that they choose to use to make it more comfortable to be around you. <clears throat> and the crazy thing is they'll do all of that instead of just leaving you to fuck alone. Narcissists put you, put, they put a bullseye on you when they see that you're something that they're not. And especially when they find out they'll never be that, whether they copy you or not, you're number one on their list, on their hit list. They got to take you down in whatever way, shape, or form. And this is where they um, adopt the urge to want to destroy you. And I said all of that to say, you don't need them. They need you. And the thing is, we get so caught up in wanting to be needed. We get so caught up in wanting to be needed that <clears throat> we don't even question the reasons why that person needs us. Because just because somebody needs you doesn't mean it's for good. Just because somebody needs you doesn't mean it's for you to love them or for them to love you. Somebody can need you to abuse you. <clears throat> somebody can need you to feed off of your good energy. Somebody can need you to put you down to put them up. Somebody can need you to get through a worse, a, a bad time in their life and get rid of you. Somebody can need you to take the blame for things that they've done. So being needed, like I said, we get so caught up in that feeling, but being needed is not always what it's cracked up to be. Sometimes being needed means getting emptied and not being poured back into. Sometimes being needed means getting broken down and not getting rebuilt. 
And you got to recognize when it's a situation of that matter, that'll keep you from going down the rabbit hole because it's nice to be needed. Every human walking